Hi everyone and welcome back to my reactions. Today we are checking out Mad Max, the 1980 movie from Australia, I believe, starring Mel Gibson and directed by George Miller. I am very excited to get into not just the first movie, I'm going to be watching all of the Mad Max movies. I think there are four of them. I have seen Mad Max Fury Road, just a heads up, I have seen Mad Max Fury Road. Although I will still be watching it on my channel just because I enjoy it so much So when I get to Mad Max Fury Road, it'll be like more of a movie commentary because I have already seen it But the other three movies I have not seen I uh, also Mad Max Fury Road is one of my favorite most favorite action movies of all time the stunts in that movie are incredible just the realism the sandstorm scene in that movie is one of my favorite scenes in movie history when they drive into the sandstorm and junkie xl slash hans zimmer's hans zimmer's score hits and there's like the lightning and the tornadoes and stuff like beautiful 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 stuff so i'm very excited to see where that movie began over here with mad max and i have no idea what this movie is going to be about i'm assuming it's kind of the same concept as mad max fury road kind of maybe where it's like a dystopian future but it could also just be like a normal dude just living in the country called max and then he kind of goes crazy because something bad happens to him or something like that i'm not really sure where this movie's gonna go there are three movies and i'm assuming that all three of the movies are connected and then Mad Max Fury Road is kind of a revival because it has Tom Hardy as the main character not uh, Mel Gibson so I'm very excited to dive into this movie before we get into this movie though gotta do the lighting so let me turn on my light and then I'll see what lighting I should do Boop. okay okay nice the light is on I think I was okay I'm a little confused about what the lighting should be because Mad Max Fury Road is like desert but i can't just judge it off of this one movie right of uh, fury road and in the thumbnail that amazon prime gives me for mad max the, there's just like a lot of green and so i was i thought this movie was going to take place in a desert but there's green but it's also australia so i think i'm going to go like that color if you know what i mean because that color is yellow and even if there is no desert and sand in this movie then the sun is yellow and there will probably be sun because I'm pretty sure this movie was again filmed in Australia and there's a lot of sun in Australia. It's it's a very bright place. <laughs> so yeah, here is the yellow light. Also, before we get into this reaction, if you'd like to check out more of my movies or TV show reactions, you can head over to my Patreon where I have uncut reactions to many of the movies I watch on YouTube as well as early access reactions to my movies and TV shows that come out one week early. There are also two exclusive Patreon movies a month that you guys on Patreon get to choose. Thank you so, so much if you check it out. Now let's get back to the video. One more thing before we get into watching it. Uh, I know that there are two versions of this movie. There is a version that was just the actual actors talking and this kind of with thick Australian accents as people have told as people have told me and there's another version that was dubbed in American English so that they have American accents I'm watching this movie on Amazon Prime and I do not know what version I am watching I hope it is the original version I'm sorry if it is the American version this is just the version that I could easily access and the other versions that I was looking at as well did not tell me if they were the American version or the Australian version so I thought I would just go with the Amazon Prime and and hope and hope that they that they didn't dub this one for me but yeah I'm sorry if this one is the dubbed one I really would like to watch the original one so if this is the dubbed one I'll probably rewatch not on the channel but by myself rewatch the original version of it with the Australian accents when I can find it. Anyways, yeah, let's just dive on into this movie. Without further ado, I hope you enjoy my reaction to Mad Max. I like this movie already. <laughs> I like this movie already. Brian May? Like, wait, no. Not Brian May from Queen, right? Not that Brian May. George Miller. I hope he makes another Mad Max movie, like after Fury Road. A few years from now is always a really good way to start a movie because it could be any any time. Death this year, 57. So is this like kind of a post-apocalyptic Australia, sort of? This is Mel Gibson. He looks so cool. Look at those boots. What's he driving? This one hurts. It's one of the V8s. 
Is Max a cop? He's a cop? No way. I thought he was just gonna be some free agent running around gunning and sh driving, you know? You're so dead. You're so dead. Keep going. Keep going. Is he Mad Max? No, Ma Max has to be Mel Gibson. He just looks mad, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh my god. How cool is Mel Gibson right now? So cool. We haven't even seen his face yet. <laughs> Okay, so I was wrong. It's definitely not a post-apocalyptic post world. However, everyone has like really cool cars and that might just be the aesthetic of the movie, you know, but it's a cool aesthetic. Now what's this I hear about you and Jonathan? What about Jonathan? I found Waldo. I found Waldo. <laughs> oh, I'm so funny. This way. Why did this kid just run into the road and fall over? Does he want to get run over? Why is this kid just running in the middle of the road? What is he thinking? <laughs> that was so awesome. That was so awesome. Much damage. I love him already. He sounds so serious and cool and awesome. He definitely reminds me of those like people in like all white paint from Mad Max Fury Road where they like drive and they're willing to kill themselves for like glory or whatever they said. I'm the Night Rider! <laughs> She's like, yes, I heard you already. You said that. Let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> Some Night Rider. Night Riders would never swerve. <laughs> oh! <laughs> what? What the heck? That was such a big explosion. Also, hero shot. It's so beautiful. What the heck? It is actually so beautiful. I have always wanted to go to Australia. Heard they have big spiders there, though. Big spiders. That's kind of scary. Spiders are kind of scary. The kid just has a gun. What's that? I love you. I love you. Crazy about you. Ah, oh, I was close. The music right now is so good too, and their relationship seems really good as well. Tells of Juustas. It's Juustas because the U is a little bit slanted, so it makes the U go ew. You know? <laughs> Come on, Max, you've, you've seen it, you've heard it, and, you, and you're still asking questions. Drive it. Drive it. That's a bad crash. That is a bad crash. <sighs> Good boy, Max. Hey. You're a good boy. Hey, hey, hey. Come on. I get it, because he has a dog's name, Max. Ha 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 ha. If you were a car person, I think you would absolutely adore this movie. I, myself, am not really a car person. I mean, I can appreciate cars. I just don't know anything about cars. But I feel like if you did know stuff about cars and motorcycles in this movie, you would absolutely love it just for the car stuff alone. <gasps> Look at the dog on the back of the motorcycle. Did you see that dog? That was the cutest thing ever. Is this our villain? Is this our villain and his gang? He looks really cool. I honestly cannot tell if they're trying to go for like a futuristic rural look in this movie or if like something happened. Like, very confused, but I don't really care. I'm just going for future futuristic rural, rural look. That's what I think the movie's going for. Baba, Johnny. This is so cool. He just makes like little noises and they know, Baba, Johnny. 
I, they just know what that means. That's so cool. The dog. The dog is the best part of this movie by far. <laughs> I'm just joking. The dog is a good part of this movie, but this movie is really good. Are they going after that car? Oh man. Oh man. Are they gonna kill these people? I really hope they don't try and kill these people. This is pretty much murder itself to the car. Like, you could consider this first degree murder to the car. <laughs> That's pretty funny, actually. <laughs> Get out of jail free card. What the heck is that thing? That is so funny. <laughs> what a turkey. Hey, fella, you're a turkey, you know that? <laughs> <laughs> That's stuff that like my dad says to me. You're a turkey. <laughs> so good. Quack right out of his skull. Quack right out of his skull, man. He ain't never come back. Oh, these poor people. Oh. Okay, just let go of the leash. Literally let it go of it. And everything's gonna be all right. I wonder what they did to him. What did, what did they do to the guy? What a palace. What a palace. I wish I could do that. Just sit on the back of a truck with a couch. No, it's very dangerous. But it would be comfortable. Hey, this is like... Oh, it's the Halls of Justice. <laughs> I will never say it justice. I'll always say justice if the U is slight. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Take your time, Charlie. We got plenty of it. It's a good day and good luck. <gasps> Cause he got his throat cut, so now he has like an electronic thing. That's that's really cool, actually. What the heck? The courts will hear about this, I promise you. The courts will hear about this destruction. The courts will hear about this. The courts will hear about this. <laughs> Shut up, Mr. Man. See you later, Goose. It's been a pleasure. See you later, Goose. What does that mean? What does the tap on the neck mean? Does it mean anything? Is it like a, like a bad word or something like that? This movie really is mad. <laughs> Okay, so I feel like there was some form of apocalypse though, because it feels very barren, empty, and everything is so run down. You know what I like? Like there must have been some form of apocalypse. Mouth shut. Oh my God, this guy is actually intense. He's such an intense villain. I thought he was gonna drown him in the water. Wait, he still could. What a shot, by the way, though. Like, an excellent shot. On the, licorice ride. on the licorice ride. Oh, yeah. Ah, oh, they're making eye contact. Goose and the lady. Something happened to his car. Was someone, like, messing with his car? I couldn't really see. It was really dark and it's bright in my room, so it was hard. it's hard to see like really dark scenes. But I feel like I saw someone messing with a car. Maybe not his car. Oh, is he going to blow up though? Is it going to blow up now? Strange thing to have on your door, but I'll accept it. Yeah, he's definitely about to die because there are dogs barking. You know? You know? Okay, I'm still nervous that this guy's gonna blow up. If he hits a certain speed, will he blow up? I don't even know. Is he gonna blow up at all? I'm just so stressed that he is. Someone messed with this with this uh, with this motorcycle. The music is making me so stressed, and I don't like. I ah, what's gonna happen? Did they like loosen his tire? 
Oh. Oh. See the box going into the hole. I can't believe he didn't even get a road rash though. Like, are you insanely serious? I thought he was gonna be broken. That was a really good throw. That was an insane throw. How did he manage to do that? Imagine if he missed and their plan just failed. <laughs> Oh no, are they gonna use that, use the lighter and light him on fire? No, 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 no! Oh no! Oh, there was an explosion, but there will be. Wait, there wasn't an explosion at all? Is he gonna be in the hospital now? With like burns everywhere? I also feel like Mel Gibson has not really been in the movie at all. It's been like Goose's story so far. Oh! Oh, that is- oh! How is he even still alive? That is so burnt. That is the most burnt I've ever seen. I was hungry. Peanut butter and honey. That is such a good sandwich. Peanut butter and honey is such a good combination. Mel Gibson, your sandwich game is on point. Now there's nothing. There's still not nothing. He's still there. He just looks like a burnt potato chip. Do you really expect me to go for that crap? You gotta admit I see I'm good there for that. Yeah. Bye, people. Hey! This guy, the bald guy, is like addicted to heroes. Grow yourself a beard. Draw flies. Just think about it for a while. Please don't grow a beard, but take a few weeks off. Thank you. You'll be back, Rock Tansky. You'll be back. <laughs> Arnold just appears. You'll be back. <laughs> Oh my god. This relationship makes me so happy. It just seems so sweet. I love it. I love it so much. And they got a dog. I love it. Oh my gosh. I like Mad Max even more now because he has a beautiful dog. He has a beautiful dog. <laughs> They're going on a field picnic with their dog. Oh my gosh, that is the only date I ever want to go on. Well, how good it felt just to be there alongside you. This is so sweet. This is really, really sweet. I, I don't want to wait 10 years to tell you how I'm feeling about you right now. Do you know what? You can just say it. You can just say that you love her. You can just say that, you know? You can just say that. Oh, the most romantic place in the world. A scrapyard. I love it. Sure. There's a shop just down the beach. They'll appreciate the business. Sure. Thanks. Very nervous, though. They're going by themselves. And everything is so happy. Things cannot be this happy for much longer in this movie. I feel like uh, there have been too many non-happy events. So I feel like something bad is going to happen to the wife and the kid. Or the girlfriend and the kid. Wow, this is so pretty. Now I really want to go to Australia. If anyone wants to buy me a plane ticket to Australia, I'll go. I'll take it. <laughs> the only issue with Australia is that it's so far away from where I live. It's like a whole day's journey to get there. There are direct flights, I guess, but it's still like 14 hours. No! 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 Schweppes is good ice cream, though. But no! Why is she smiling? Yes! Okay, good. Good. She was faking. I love it so much. She's so tough. What's wrong? Well, just take my word for it. Get in! Oh, well, what about the tire? Please, Max! Chuck the dog. Oh, I thought he was going to chuck the dog through the window. Pass it through. Said that we're heading north. Maybe. 
No, maybe. I love the maybe at the end. Had to just make sure that they knew it was a maybe. <laughs> This is where he's about to get the term Mad Max. This final, this final act. What you got there, mate? Ew! Oh! I- Oh! I saw the guy like roll on the ground clutching his arm and I thought he had broken his shoulder but I didn't say anything. Oh, he actually lost his hand? Oh, that's so gross. I don't know if they meant to do this, but there was the music, and then the shot looks a little darker than the rest of the movie, and it just kind of made me get, gave gave me this sense of looming dread, if you know what I mean. It's a good, it was a good shot, and I don't know if it was intentional or not, but that's what I thought when I looked at that shot. <laughs> that's me. That's me when I'm working on cars. Or with some my friend, he's actually like really likes cars. And <laughs> that's me trying to help. <laughs> Crazy for you. I feel like he did it wrong. He probably said something like, Crazy eat banana. <laughs> I'm so nervous for her again. Every time she goes off alone. Oh, because like Max isn't going to get hurt until the end of the movie if he does get hurt. But I feel like if anyone's going to get him to do something, it's they're going to hurt his his girlfriend slash baby. You know what I mean? So I'm very nervous for them at all times. That is such a nice spot for a swim. I would like to go. But the dog, the dog senses trouble. It's too quiet. 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 I'm being loud so that it's not too quiet. Yeah, I drop your umbrella. It's just, it's just wait. It's just wait. Okay, that was just a man. That was, oh, was that the guy that the, that the old lady was talking about? Come on, Jesse, well, let's go into the house, eh? Come on. Max is mad now. <laughs> that's my secret. I'm always angry. That's, that's what Max says. <laughs> If they hurt that baby, then I hate them forever. I already do hate them, but not forever yet. Well, well. No! And Max is in the forest. Okay, that old lady did good. I feel like she's gonna die now, but but Max is coming. Uh, this movie has to end in a driving scene, right? Like, that's, yeah, it has to. Driving climax. Oh yeah, because he was fixing the car and he probably didn't get a chance to finish fixing it. Run off road and then just duck in the tall grass and maybe they wouldn't see you. Oh no. The old lady missed though. How sucky is she? Hold on. Hold on, what does that mean? Did she get hit? Hold on. No way she got hit. No way she got hit. No, she just ducked. She didn't get hit. She didn't get hit. I'm in denial. Did she got she got hit. She got hit. She got run over. Now Max is just gonna kill these people. Oh my god. Her arm? Her arm fell off? 
Did they say they lost the kid as well? Did they say they lost the kid? Here's a turning point. This is where Mad comes into the title. See, when they said Mad Max, I always assume Mad is in like crazy. But I think it's just that he's mad, you know? That he's like actually just mad that they like killed his baby and tore off his girlfriend's arm and she could die too. I love how floppy all the writers are. You know, like, they just like do flips and hang on walls and stuff. It's just fun to watch. They're very expressive. This is such a cool car. It is Max and he's gonna go far in the car. That's my little song. They're playing chicken again. Another game of chicken. Motorcycles would not beat a car, so you guys, the guy who fell, the the guys who fell in the water were smart, you know. That's such a fun road. Australia, Australia looks like it has the best roads to just go fast on, you know. It's just flat and straight. Oh. Oh, his ankle. That is a literal broken ankles. Oh, is that his kneecap, not his ankle? Oh no, his arm. Why wouldn't you have moved your arm? You could see that they were going towards it from a mile away. What? Yeah, you know what you're doing. Sure you do. You just eat it instantly. You suck. It's his left foot and you need your right foot to drive. In a car that is on the other side of the road, like I drive on the on the left side of the car and he's driving on the right. On a car that drives on the other side of the road, you don't use your left foot, do you? You use your right foot still, right? Did you see his eyeballs just get huge there? This movie has some insane crashes and stunts and crashes. I said that twice because I needed just to make sure that you knew how insane the crashes are. What are you doing, man? Is he gonna blow up the car, make him look like Goose? Because he's the one who did that to Goose? He was dead for Christ's sake! You, you killed Goose pretty much. Sorry, mate. It's gonna take you 10 minutes to hack through it with this. Oh my god, this is like a saw, a saw trap. It's literally like a saw trap. Oh, he's so dead. There's no way he does it. Oh, I was about to say, are they just not going to show an explosion? And then boom, explosion proved me wrong before I could even say it. So I guess it didn't really prove me wrong because I didn't say it. But it proved me wrong before I could, before I, I could prove myself wrong. What? What? That was it? It just ends? What? I guess there are two- What? Huh? There are two more movies? I know there are two more movies with, with Mel Gibson as Mad Max, but what? 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 So he became Mad Max at the very end of this movie, and then the other two movies are him as Mad Max? Is that it? What? What a weird ending. Like, it was a good ending. It was just like, I did not expect it to be the ending. I thought there was still like 10 minutes left of the movie. And that was my reaction to Mad Max. So on Amazon Prime, it says that this movie was 1980, 
and then on Google it says and IMDb it says this movie was 1979. So I'm wondering if 1980 is the year that the movie went for came came from Australia and went out worldwide, but it debuted in 1979 in Australia. Not really sure, but I guess I'll say 1979 because that is what Google and IMDb is telling me. So sorry that I said 1980 at the start of this reaction. But yeah, this movie was so good. And as you all know, when I go onto the cast on Google, it gives me the reviews for the movie. And I am very glad that the Rotten Tomato score, first of all, is really good. 90% definitely deserves it. This movie was really, really good. Metacritic, 73%. I would... I think 73% is a pretty good score too, but then the audience score is 6.9, and the audience score is where I'm a little confused by it, but I also can understand. I can understand why people maybe don't like this movie, because it is a very it is a very quiet movie. If you compare it to Mad Max Fury Road, for instance, this movie is a very quiet movie. This movie, it does have a lot of action in it, but the action is not explosive. I feel like the action is very subdued, but still very cool, and it is kind of, it is like crazy action, but you don't see a lot of what happens after the fact. Like, you don't see uh, Jesse and the son get hit, if you know what I mean. Like, you don't see some of the impacts. There's only one, like, car explosion in this movie, I think, and that's at the very end. Mad Max doesn't become Mad Max until the very end of the movie. So, I can see why people maybe would be disappointed with this movie, but I personally love this movie, and I wish that audience score was like an 8. I think I'd probably give this movie an 8 out of 10. I think this movie was really, really good. Also, I'm pretty sure, like on 90, 90% sure, that I watched the Australian version, so it was really good to see how the movie was supposed to be portrayed, how the actress was supposed to talk, and dubbing always kind of confuses me, because even if the dub is good, and I know, but I, if but I know it's dubbed, then I kind of get pulled out of the movie because I'm like, this is not how the character is actually supposed to sound. So I'm glad that I watched the Australian version, version, and I'm glad that Amazon Prime had the Australian version because it just made me more invested into this movie. What I'm going to talk about in this movie war is just kind of i guess i'm just gonna talk about random things because i did just finish watching this movie i did think it was really good and i'm just trying to get my thoughts together so bear with me this review might be a little bit messy but i will try my best i guess the thing i'm going to talk about first is the score the score was really good brian may i think that's what his name was the the composer he did a really good job i did not expect a movie to have this movie to have such a good score and that is only because I knew this movie was low budget, and I feel like low budget movies can have, like have like, they have scores that work, but they don't really have scores that are great. I feel like just because they don't have the budget for them, all of their money gets poured into the actual movie, and then music I feel like kind of comes last a lot of the times. But in this movie, I know this movie's budget was probably I think it was like three hundred thousand dollars, which isn't like a little bit of money it's 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 like a it's a lot of money but it's not a lot of money for a movie um uh, it's but i mean three hundred thousand dollars in 1979 though i don't know how much that would be in movies today but i feel like it is not a lot of money the score was really good it is not a score that i feel like i will listen to outside of the movie but i thought that it did add a lot of uh, not necessarily like emotion to the scenes, but it did add a lot of tension to the scenes that the movie was in. It did elevate the, the movie at points when the music was playing. I feel like a lot of points, especially during the car chases, the music was so good. Like there was just like this theme. I forget, I forget the actual like how the theme went, but it was just like a jam to listen to. And so whenever the car chase is on, I enjoyed the car chases more, even though the car chases were great. I enjoyed the car chases more because the music elevated them. And I think that is sort of the point of music in movies to elevate a scene. And if the music doesn't elevate a scene, then did you really need the music in the first place? And so the music worked in this movie because it did elevate the scene and I, I really liked it. And it's not the Brian May from Queen that would be, I feel like that would be really strange if it was, <laughs> you know, I feel like that would be really strange if it was. So good job to this other Brian May. I think that's his name. If it's not his name, then I'm sorry. I'm just saying Brian May for no reason, but I'm like 90% sure that I saw that name at the start when it was talking about the music. Getting into the actual action now, this is in fact an action movie. So I should probably talk about the action. Actually, before I talk about the action, I want to talk about the setting. The setting is something that confused me, and they did not explain the setting at all. They just said a few years from now, 1979, I'd probably 
probably guess like 85, 86. This movie was supposed to take place when it came out, but a few years from now is a good title card because you can watch it at any time in like any year. It could be like 2032 and this movie could could take place in like 2040 or something like that and every and since technology or since the world has gone down the drain everyone's using this old technology again so a few years from now always works and i think it is a really cool title because it kind of makes the movie timeless the a few years from now adds a timeless quality because this movie could could in theory take place in 2026 and it is believable because if the world does go down the drain you do have this these old technologies that probably would still work with some with some maintenance and stuff like that. So I think that is a really thing, but a really cool thing. But I wasn't sure if this takes place in a sort of post-apocalyptic world, or if this just takes place in a very futuristic rural part of Australia. And I I thought that maybe it was post-apocalyptic at the very start, just because Mad Max Fury Road was. But then when I watched it, I was like, maybe it's just a very rural part of the world as in the future. But then the more I watched it, like the police station, for instance, was basically destroyed and there were like five police officers, but there were still doctors and there were still hospitals. So I was a little confused, but I think that maybe there is some form of maybe not apocalypse, but also apocalypse. It was like a half apocalypse that happened and a lot of a lot of things got destroyed and the world is kind of there is not really a government anymore, it feels like. It is kind of just every man, woman, and child for themselves, sort of. That's, that's kind of the vibe I got from this movie. But I thought it was really interesting that they didn't explain the world. They kind of just let the audience be in the world, which I think is the best way to explore the world. I was, again, a little confused by the world itself. And if there was an apocalypse, maybe that would be explored in the later movies. But I did enjoy the world. I thought it was a really cool idea. Getting into the action though, the action was phenomenal. George Miller, after watching Mad Max Fury Road, I was in love with the action in that movie. That that action was incredible and it's really cool to see where that action basically started with this first mass Mad Max movie. And I can totally see like how Mad Max, this one, 1979 one, became Mad Max Fury Road eventually and how his directing has like continued from from point A to point I guess B, C, D to point from point D, B and C being Mad Max 2 and 3. But yeah, he he is so he is such a good director when it comes to action. He loves to use practical effects, which is something that I love. Even in Mad Max Fury Road, a lot of the cars, a lot of the stunts are done practically, which makes the movie so much more better just because you know it's all real and these cars are actually crashing and stuff. And this movie, the cars, even though it was a low budget, even though the some of the crashes were off screen, some of the hits were off screen, that doesn't mean like the impact of it wasn't off screen. He did a very, very good job because of the budget to frame shots in just the right way so that even though maybe we couldn't see the crash because of the, the lower budget, we could still feel the impact and the weight of the of the crash. Like when, when Jesse gets hit by the car, we don't see it, but I still felt the impact of her like it was I felt as though I had seen it because of the shot composition because of the shoe falling onto the floor and and then the scream that kind of echoes across the across the frame like really really good job really good directing but the action was great there were some great car jumps everything in the car was phenomenal that the tracking shots from the car behind the actual car like with the camera was amazing the, whenever the motorcycles are on screen it was awesome i don't know anything about cars and i think if you do like cars you would enjoy this movie even more more because there are just so many cool cars but yeah i don't know cars but i still found the car scenes like entrancing in a way just because of how awesome they were. Is entrancing a word? I think it is. If it isn't, then I just made up a word, but it just means kind of awesome. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? It was like, I was entranced by it. That's a word. That is a word, right? I think that is a word. Okay, getting, I think that was everything I want to talk about before I talk about the cast. I just really liked the quiet scenes. Oh yeah, I guess, I guess I can just say this too. I really liked the quiet scenes in this movie. I really liked that this movie went for a quieter approach. I was expecting a wall-to-wall -wall action movie with cars, and I got a really good action movie with some great emotional quiet moments with Mel Gibson Max, 
and his character and and his girlfriend i think jesse was his girlfriend right and i really liked those moments it really developed the character and i'm glad that they did that and i'm glad that max wasn't mad max at the start of the movie which is what i was expecting and then i was confused i was like wait is he not mad max yet and then at the end of the movie he becomes mad max and that turn is so cool to watch and i thought it was a really really good storytelling i thought the story storytelling in this movie was really strong actually okay getting into the cast now mel gibson as max is it what's his last name max rocket rocket I, I forget his last name, but Max, I'll just call him Max, I guess, as Mad Max. He was so good in this movie. This felt like one of his earlier roles. It definitely probably was 1979. It might have been actually maybe the one that got him into more stardom, more fame. I thought he did a really good job. I thought that it was cool. It's cool to see him in this movie and then watch him in other movies, especially like the Lethal Weapon franchise. I feel like he has definitely grown as an actor throughout his career. And this one, I thought he was a little weak on the emotional stuff. I thought that he wasn't delivering it as well as he was delivering the emotional stuff in maybe Lethal Weapon 3, Lethal Weapon 4, even like Lethal Weapon 1 and 2. But that didn't really distract me from the movie at all. I just thought that he was he was better in the Lethal Weapon movies than he was in this movie. But I thought he was so good as in the car when he was acting tough, when he, was, when he became Mad Max. I thought he was excellent. I think he is a perfect choice to play Mad Max. I think he does have that kind of crazy quality about him when he acts, and he also is just a very tough person when it comes to acting. Like, he is so good at playing this tough this tough guy, and he looks like a tough guy, so I think he is the perfect choice to play Max, and I thought that Mel Gibson did an amazing job. Hugh Ke Keas, Keas Byrne as Toe Cutter. Toe Cutter was the villain of this movie, I believe. Wait a second. I feel like I'm gonna like Mad Max Fury Road even more because I feel like a lot of these people are in Fury Road. I know Mel Gibson is in Fury Road at some point. I forget when, I haven't seen it in a while. But Hugh Keas Byrne is also in Fury Road, which is really interesting. So I'm gonna I'm gonna enjoy watching Fury Road again. But yeah, as Toe Cutter, the villain, he was really, really, cool in this movie he has not been caught yet actually he is still on the run which is interesting that they just left him on the run but i guess there will be sequels but i'm very excited to see him because he was like creepy and like gross and disturbing but he was also like thrilling to watch and he became a snake at one point which was cool but hugh keas burn i thought did an incredible job with this character that we know not a lot about he kind of seems like he he feels like the king of his own world. He's got all of his biker gang followers following him, like obeying his every command, basically. And he he does kind of feel like he's in his own he's in his own head a lot. But he also is just like he he when someone gets on his bad side, he needs to stop that. Like he needs to he needs to kill them, basically, like get them out of the way, get the problem, erase the problem from his life, literally, basically. And um, he was a very cool villain to watch. And again, we don't know much about him, but I was okay with that. Uh, I, I would have liked to know a little bit more about him. I, I think the sequels might address that. But as a villain in this one movie, I thought he was a pretty strong villain. And I thought that Hugh, I'm sorry if I'm saying his last name wrong, Kikiaz, Kikis, Burn did a really good job. The last person, actually I'll talk about two more people. I'll talk about Joanne Samuel and then Steve Bisley. Uh, so Joanne Samuel as Jessie, I really did like her. I thought she was a really good character. I thought she was a really good partner to Max. I thought that her chemistry with Mel Gibson was really good and I believe that their relationship was very strong. They were also a very sweet couple and I don't know, I just thought their relationship was really believable. I thought she was really cool, especially when she was acting tough. I thought that that was awesome when she kicked when she kicked toe cutter in the nuts i was like oh yes that's awesome i thought she was like i thought she was really good in this movie and i'm hoping that she's in two and three but i she might die i'm not sure her arm was cut off and there is a chance that she'll die so i'm hoping she is in mad max 2 or and 3 but if she isn't that just means that matt that max is going to be even more mad <laughs> so i don't know if i'm more excited for her to come back in mad max 2 and 3 or if i want her to die so max becomes even more mad but yeah i thought joanne samuel did a great job the last person i'm going to talk about is steve bisley as jim 
Goose. I thought he was really funny in this movie. For the first half of this movie, actually, Max is barely in it, and he is kind of the star of the movie until he becomes a charred potato chip. And he was really funny. I really enjoyed him a lot. Um, he had a very a lot of funny moments, but then also got very serious very quickly. Like you could tell he was taking the job seriously, but he just wanted to have fun with it. I really liked his character, but I'm glad that he was only in the movie for half of it and then he became a burnt potato chip because that was a really good thing for Max to get into the movie. Uh, I feel like if he stayed in the movie a lot, he would sort of be more the focus because he was more the focus of the first half. So if he was in the second half, I feel like the audience would focus more on him because he would feel like the main character. So I'm glad that he became a burnt potato chip, even though that is a gross, horrible thing to for someone to become. But yeah, I thought he did do a really good job when he was when he was on screen okay and that is my reaction slash review to mad max the 1979 movie starring mel gibson hugh kias burn and joanne samuel thank you so much for watching and thank you so much to these wonderful beautiful amazing people right here for supporting me supporting my channel it really does mean a lot and thank you so much if you listen this far into my review it means a lot for you just to listen to me talk and talk and talk and talk and i will see you next time for my next movie reaction